will then tell you a little bit about our technology. We call it the SEG technology. And the main topic is then reforming in high temperature fuel cells. And SEG means zero emission gas. And of course, when I say uh, reforming and high temperature fuel cells, we then talk about production of hydrogen and electricity. And in our technology, we have a co-production of hydrogen and electricity. And also, in addition, very high overall efficiency and an integrated CO2 separation. And what is important then to remember about this technology is that we get, even if you don't have a CO2 sequestration system, we get more energy and less emissions. With our technology, we get the same amount of energy out of less amount of hydrocarbon gases. And then it's also less uh, emission of CO2 if you are not able to do something with the uh, CO2 afterwards. So in the SEG technology, we then have a solid oxide fuel cell for the electricity production. At the same time, we use the waste heat in this uh, fuel cell system for hydrogen production in a modified reforming reaction. We add a solid sorbent into the reformer, then we are able to separate CO2 as a carbonate, as an integrated part of the system. And in fact, it is the regeneration of the formed carbonate into oxide. We need high temperature. And in fact, it is the integration between the two basic technologies, the reformer system and the solid oxide fuel cells, that is actually the, what we call the SEG technology. And if we are able to do this in a very efficient manner, we get a high overall total efficiency. So I will show you a short movie, if everything is working, that can show you how this technology actually works. So please listen carefully. What if the world was clean? No air pollution from traffic or power plants. No release of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. What if we could significantly decrease our use of fossil fuels, increasing the lifespan of our fossil energy reserves, and make more of them available for future generations? A technology is now emerging that can help to do all of these things. It is called Zeg Power, Zero Emission Gas Power. It's a new kind of power plant, able to run on various fossil and non-fossil carbon-based fuels. Vastly superior to the conventional coal or gas-based power plants we use today. Electricity and hydrogen is produced at significantly higher efficiencies while capturing carbon at the same time, leaving no emissions of CO2 or other harmful substances. Zen is based on two types of technologies the solid oxide fuel cell and a special kind of reactor. The reactor is fed fuel gas and water and produces hydrogen while at the same time capturing CO2. Part of the hydrogen is then used by the fuel cell which produces electricity and high quality heat. This heat is delivered to the reactor that as a consequence releases its captured CO2 in a separate pure stream ready for storage. These two technologies enhance each other in their close integration, making them highly efficient. ZEG power plants can be built in various sizes, from your average gas station to large and centralized units. In addition to delivering clean electricity, the hydrogen produced could power your car, eliminating hazardous transport emissions. The world can be clean. And Zeg Power is leading the way. So the reason why we are able to say that this has a very, very promising high overall efficiency is then based on process simulation of large scale power plants based on this technology. That is power plants producing 
400 megawatt of electricity and various amounts of hydrogen. And what you can see from the table, three different cases, we get high overall efficiencies, more than 70% for three, the three different cases. All included 100% CO2 separation. And this was done uh, together with some Norwegian partners for some years ago. And Statoil, the oil company, they repeated this exercise just uh, recently. And then they cal calculated for a plant producing only power. That is when all the hydrogen was used for power production. They, con they found that we had an overall efficiency of 75% with 100% CO2 capture, and also the CO2 was compressed to 110 bars. And of course, this is unique with respect to efficiency, uh, state-of-the-art uh, gas turbines, about 60% overall efficiency. If we add uh, CO2 for CO2 capture, it's reduced to uh, 50%, and with our technology, we had a potential of 75% with CO2 capture included. So this is very promising. The technology is then, of course, modular based and also applicable at increasing scale and also for different applications. On the long term, the main goal is, of course, uh, large scale power plants that is with respect to CO2 capture. But as I said, uh, earlier, even without the possibility of CO2 sequestration, we get lower emissions because of the high efficiency, 75% compared to 60 or lower. On the short term, we think that this technology is of special interest for small scale decentralized power plants based on local biomass products. So uh, this is then a, an overview of what we call the BioSeg concept and the BioSeg value proposition. Uh, with our technology, we then have an uh, energy station, of course, producing hydrogen from biomethane, or we could also fill up with uh, natural gas or LNG. We produce hydrogen. We all know that that can be used for transportation purposes or for further industrial purposes. Uh, with our technology, we are also produce power that can be powering electrical cars, or the power could also be uh, transported to the grid or used for uh, other industrial activities and integrated industrial concepts, providing standalone production. If we use uh, biomass as a feed to the technology, we have an extra bonus with the CO2 capture because this CO2 capture is green. It's uh, considered as climate neutral. However, if we are able to use it for some industrial purposes, we could also have a negative uh, climate contribution. And what I've added here is also the, uh, the possibility of using this uh, bio CO2 in a power to gas concept where surplus uh, wind or solar Power is used for hydrogen production, and then we produce methane from the bio CO2 and hydrogen. So why then uh, is it smart with a technology like this on biogas? Uh, and from my point of view, this is uh, mainly because uh, biogas production is waste treatment, and it's difficult to find good value chains for biogas. Some of the challenges are uh, the cost of produced energy, the need and the balance uh, of produced energy between what is needed in the plant itself and what can be sold outside the plant, and also the gas yield. And in this aspect, adding hydrogen is smart to a biogas reactor. In a biogas system, uh, producing biogas, we get about 60% uh, methane and 40% CO2. And if we add hydrogen, we get more methane out of the system and reduced amounts of CO2. And uh, for biogas, using biogas, for instance, in uh, transport, it's needed to clean 
uh, the biogas for CO2 before we can use it. And with our technology then, we are able to produce uh, both hydrogen and power, as I said, and we, we separate CO2 as an integrated part of the, of the story. So with our technology, we are able to use raw uh, biogas that is uh, a mixture then of methane and CO2. So this is a pro possible way of improving the biogas production and also the economy in a system like this. So our status today is two uh, projects I will tell you a little bit about, what we call BioSeg 50 and the SEG 400 project. In the BioSeg 50, we have built a 50 kilowatt demonstration plant based on uh, biogas that was operational from 2014. And at that site, we have then demonstrated what we call sorption enhanced reforming with CO2 separation, SOFC, and thermal integration between the two technologies. On the left side, you see a picture of the reformer system. That is the reformer to the left uh, uh, in the picture that for uh, hydrogen production. And the other is the regenerator that we use for regeneration of the solid sorbent. Uh, this uh, system is able to produce about 10 normal cubic meter hydrogen and over in a continuous mode. Then it's a dual bubbling fluid as bed reformer system. The other part of the system is then a 20 kilowatt uh, solid oxide fuel cell. Uh, the fuel cell was made by uh, Prototech in Norway, Bergen, with stacks from Plan C from Hofer IKTS. And this uh, module is operating at a lower temperature than we really need. And this is operating at around 830 degrees. We should um, most would like to have higher temperatures, so in this case we had to have some external uh, additional heat in order to have a, a regenerating for the CO2 sorbent. From a system like this, we have learned a lot. Nothing has uh, happened exactly as we thought, but we have been able to, to uh, produce hydrogen uh, with this, uh, we call it steam methane reforming, we are able to have more than 95% hydrogen in one single step. We have shown that in the, in the plant. We have produced power to the grid, and we have tested uh, thermal integration. We have been able to get uh, the necessary heat in order to release CO2 from the absorbed uh, carbonate. And very important is that we have got uh, um, operational knowledge a lot of, learned a lot about control systems, startups, flexibility of the process, and so on. And a lot of this uh, input is then used for further modeling and optimization into the next step of, uh, of uh, upscaling. And we think that uh, the next step is about 10 times as large as the one we already got. We call it then a 400 kilowatt module that is producing about 200 kilowatt of hydrogen and 200 kilowatt of uh, electricity. And within the next five years or so, we hope we are able to produce also megawatt uh, plants. So in this uh, first phase of the SEG 400 project, we provide design and cost estimate of a plant like this. Uh, high focus is then on, on the system design, uh, both a SOFC module and also an afterburner in order to uh, uh, ensure high enough amount of heat. We have uh, high temperature heat exchangers. It's of course very important in this uh, concept because we need transfer of as much heat as possible. We are looking on uh, uh, the reformer system and of course also balance of plant. In addition to the more technical side, we are also doing modeling, uh, develop what we call the BioSeg concept, 
where we find where this technology is of special interest. Industrial applications and customers that require both hydrogen and electricity production. And if we are able to find some solutions for using the CO2, that is an additional benefit. So, to, to sum up, uh, the strengths of this technology for energy production is then the very high overall efficiency with integrated CO2 separation without any additional costs. The CO2 is delivered from the plant, pressurized and ready for further industrial use or for sequestration. And as I said earlier, even if you don't do anything with the CO2, we got less emissions for each kilowatt hour produced even without the sequestration. One strength is also that we are able to have uh, distributed standalone production without any grid connection and we are also possi possible to have uh, carbon negative solutions if we capture the CO2 from biogas. The technology is also very flexible. All types of carbon based fuels can be used. The product composition, that is the amount of hydrogen and electricity can be used. Uh, varied within design limits, dependent on the customer demand. And as I said, it's also module-based with various applications and scale. So, thank you for your attention. And I'm in the Norwegian booth B60, if you would like to have more information. Thank you very much. That was our speaker, Dr. Björk Andresen. And once again, she can be visited for further discussion at the booth B60. Once again, big hands, please. Our next topic will be in only two minutes time. And for that, we'll hear the US Department of Energy, Hydrogen and Fuel Cells. And we'll hear overview from the department itself. That will be in only two minutes time. <laughs> 